Smartphone data traffic over Wi-Fi has been around for years, but now with carrier class Wi-Fi calling, we can expect a great deal of smartphone, smartphone voice traffic to also move over to Wi-Fi. Streaming live from the floor at TIA 2015 Network of the Future to tell us a lot more about Wi-Fi calling is Della Conley. She's Director of Coverage Solutions at T-Mobile. We also have Josh Wigginton. He's Staff Vice President of Product Management at Interop Technologies. And on the end here on our panel is Kelly Davis Fellner, Vice President of Marketing at the Wi-Fi Alliance. And it's great to have you all in the program, certainly talking about something that's been uh, in the headlines uh, of, as of recently, Wi-Fi calling. But, and, I'll, and I'll start with you. Yep. Certainly Wi-Fi calling has been around for quite some time, even all the way back since 2007, and no one knows that more than you do. Mm -hmm. What were the benefits of Wi-Fi calling back then, and why is it in the foreground now? So. Uh, Wi-Fi calling has always been something that T-Mobile thought should be core functionality. We want to give customers the ability to connect um, with any technology they have available and not limit them to any one single network. And so by giving them Wi-Fi calling, we give them the ability to connect and use their handset beyond where traditional networks can reach. Josh, what's happened in the industry, what's happened in the consumer market that people are, are noticing Wi-Fi calling? Now? Sure. Um, I would say there's a couple things that are leading to the, the growth of, of Wi-Fi calling. Um, one is smartphone penetration. If we look back at 2007, smartphone penetration was somewhere around 20%. That's climbed to up over 80% today. So, you know, the, the devices that are, are in the hands of consumer are now Wi-Fi enabled. They're smart devices. Um, and then with the launch of the iconic devices from the likes of Apple or Samsung and the others, um, it's a seamless experience. Uh, Wi-Fi calling should be something that's seamless to the subscriber where they don't even know, they don't have to log in, launch an app, or do anything different. They just use the native dialer just like they used to making telephone calls today. So why are operators, and excuse the phrase, but why are operators jumping on the Wi-Fi calling bandwagon now since uh, as Tia Mobile has launched this technology uh, some time back? Um, I would say, you know, that the devices are there, so the major devices that are in the hands of consumers are there that support it natively. Um, I would say the other thing is that just consumer awareness, um, Wi-Fi networks from public Wi-Fi hotspots at work and at home, and they're always into complementing their coverage. So, um, you know, in-building coverage has always been a challenge for mobile operators. With Wi-Fi calling being a seamless experience that it is today, it's, it's a natural fit. Uh, Kelly, I want to ask you about um, the competitive climate right now as far as Wi-Fi calling goes. Are OTTs out there uh, in a better position to be a threat maybe to um, these legacy Wi-Fi calling providers? So my sense is actually sort of the reverse. Um, what OTTs did was a lot of market education and consumer awareness building about being able to do a call over Wi-Fi. And I think they really kind of seeded the market and educated the market and did kind of start knocking on the door of service providers a little bit with an alternative offering. And I think that, you know, kind of alongside some of the factors that Josh just talked about, really stimulated some of that interest among providers to do a, call, a Wi-Fi calling offering. Della, I want to ask you if you can sort of, why, and I, again, you're probably the right person to talk to, can you walk us through um, how Wi-Fi calling works without getting into the minutia, but just give us a, a general sense, and um, sure. well, actually, let's start with that. Okay. So for Wi-Fi calling um, on T-Mobile devices, I'll talk to them because it's, it's what I'm most familiar with. Um, for for T-Mobile devices, um, all the customer has to do is connect to Wi-Fi. In most cases, our phones are already default to on for Wi-Fi calling, so then the handset will try to authenticate with the network. Um, once that happens, then Wi-Fi calling is on and the customer is free to make uh, calls or text messages with anybody they want to. Um, it doesn't matter what the other customer is using for technology. So it just works like your normal cell phone. So uh, it's a marriage between um wireless connectivity and also cellular connectivity, so is it licensed and unlicensed spectrum? You, you, do you have to have both components? No, you do not. So for our Wi-Fi calling to work, you'd only need a Wi-Fi connection. There's no cellular connectivity required. That's why we can offer something like our uh, in-flight texting services with GoGo, because that requires no cellular connectivity be done at all, and it's really unexpected and surprising delight for customers to have a connection when they're on the airplane. Josh, I want to get back to these OTTs. Um, are they trying to sign uh, these MVNO agreements now with these uh, mobile network operators? Um, you know, while I do think there's a 
tremendous opportunity for MVNOs to launch Wi-Fi first and Wi-Fi only calling plans. Um, you, know, you have the likes of Google, you have Flywheel by Cablevision, you have Republic Wireless, Freedom Pop, you name it. And you know, those are really moving into Europe and globally, these Wi-Fi first or Wi-Fi only uh, MVNOs. Um, but when I look at the traditional OTT, um, their business models are slightly different. I mean, they're a freemium or a completely free to use service. Um, they go over the top of the operator's data network and they're a close community of subscribers that aren't necessarily identified by a mobile number. I may be connected to WhatsApp, but I still have my telephone number that's associated with T-Mobile or Sprint or Verizon. Um, I think there's going to be significant challenges for the OTT. One is they're not used to dealing with the regulatory requirements of a, of a mobile operator that they would have to do. Um, and then there's the business model. They're not used to paying for minutes of use. So. Um, while there have been some OTTs that have partnered with mobile operators, I, I don't see that changing much with Wi-Fi calling. Uh, Kelly, I want to ask you about, uh, excuse me, I lost my place here, Della. I want to ask you about um, <laughs> consumer concern about um, maybe a Wi-Fi call dropping. I and mean, that's really the, the issue they had with maybe the cellular side of that technology. Now on the Wi-Fi side, is there a, a technology that transitions from the Wi-Fi connection over to the cellular, cellular connection, and is that voice over LTE? Yeah, so Della probably could answer this a little yeah. bit in a little bit more detail than I could, so I'll, de I'll defer to her. I think I'll, I'll make the point first that um, we're not any worse off over a Wi-Fi connection typically than you are with a cellular connection with regard to sort of call quality and and um, call stability, but having, you know, sort of a belt and suspenders approach where you do have that handover can um, kind of enrich an offering um, in, a, in, a, in a unique way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we've seen is that um, customers really want to have that mobility. So they can walk into a Wi-Fi coverage area, maybe start a phone call, and walk out into cellular and transition that call without ever dropping it. Um, we've seen customers just, just be tremendously excited about this because it's something before where the transition between Wi-Fi and cellular was a little clunky. Um, and now it just makes it one continuous connectivity. And that's all people really care about is they just want to use their phone. Wi-Fi calling as a, as a service, is this something that um, operators feel like they can expand their portfolio with or, or not? Mm -hmm. I think um, it enriches the service provider offering. I, I think that some of the business things that are compelling about it are things like landline substitution. People just want to be on their cell phones, right? And they want to be on their cell phones at home too. So this really, you know, it, it solves coverage problems and enhances kind of that element of the subscriber experience. And then I think looking ahead, you're going to start to see more video and sort of telepresence oriented offerings. You know, five years out, two things that I would say you'll see, much more video calling and um, a subscriber experience where the, it's completely transparent whether you're on Wi-Fi or cellular. Um, users won't know, they won't care, and the experience will just be very, very good. Josh, three year, five year forecast for Wi-Fi calling? Um, I would say the same. You know, I think you'd introduce a lot more video into the experience, and, and with that, you know, you could have more enriched call services. Um, some of the things that we're seeing um, in the GSMA would be features such as, you know, maybe if I'm making a video call, I'm doing things like letting you know, uh, sending a picture before the video call, or letting you know the importance, giving a subject to a call, whether it be a voice call or a video call, very similar to like caller ID today. But you're giving pre-information and post-information from a call. You know, when you're doing these services over IP, whether that be a LTE network or a Wi-Fi network, you have a much richer experience and a, and a bigger pipe to play with. Della, what's ahead for T-Mobile in the Wi-Fi calling space? Well, we're really excited about some of the enhanced features um, that are coming, as well as I'm looking forward to seeing if there can be some more standardization across the user experience for Wi-Fi calling. So when we look at the OTT apps, um, there's such a different experience from what we're seeing. We'd really like to see that be more similar across all handsets and all, all uh, carriers, actually. So. Della, Kelly, and Josh, uh, happy to have you on the stage here at TI now. We'll certainly follow uh, this Wi-Fi calling trend, if I can call it that. Um, and thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. And again, uh, for our continued live coverage of TIA 2015, Network of the Future, please log on to TINow.org. So long.